If you're an internationally trained engineer, you know that there are many obstacles, hurdles, and roadblocks that you have to overcome in order to become a licensed professional engineer in the US. When you look at your journey and compare it to somebody who has graduated within the US with the ESC ABET accredited university, their journey, generally speaking, tends to be a little bit easier. Granted, they still have to pass the FE exam and P exam, which arguably is the most difficult portion of the entire P licensing process. But on top of all of that, you also have to make sure that your credentials are evaluated and they are recognized by the state and by NCES. In this video, you will see me answering this question regarding credential evaluation and this is a segment from my FE Electrical live training program. But before we dive into the content I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the bell icon and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Okay, there's a question um, I'm going to answer. It's an interesting question, especially uh, for those of you who are internationally trained. Let me answer that question first, and then I'll, I'll uh, take some other questions. The question is that if I can't pass through the NCES credential evaluation for my bachelor degrees and abroad, are there any states that don't require NCES credential evaluation for PE? I've helped uh, a lot of internationally trained engineers Okay, uh, prepare for the PE and the FE exams. And at the FE level, generally speaking, most of the states don't require credential evaluation, but I strongly recommend to start credential evaluation as soon as you can, for the simple reason that documentation often takes more time than you would anticipate initially. So just to get the ball rolling, it's a good idea to understand what are the requirements um, and what needs to be done. That's first, okay? So don't put it until the end. Uh, it's okay, most of the states will let you take the FE exam without even credential evaluation, that's fine. But definitely when you pass the FE exam and then you start your PE power exam preparation, you know, along with preparing for the PE exam and while waiting on the approval from your state board, if you are taking exam for a state that requires pre-approval, that's a good idea to get that started, okay? So the, the, the question is, uh, what if credential evaluation cannot pass through? So I don't know if, um, you guys have uh, looked at the credential evaluation reports from NCES. Now, there are a couple of options to get your credential evaluations done. I would strongly, strongly recommend you to use NCES credential evaluation for the simple reason, because they are conducting the exams. They also offer you know, NCES records where you can keep track of your references and whatnot um, and, and all of that. So it's a one-stop shop for everything. And it's basically recognized uh, all over the US. So if you guys have seen the NCS credential evaluation, you'll see that there's no such thing, like it is not a pass or fail, right? It's not like you get a degree from country A and then from a university within that country. And then they say, okay, this is not, you know, it's, it's not a pass or fail, okay? The way it works is that they have certain segments, certain criteria where they basically compare your curriculum with a typical, curriculum of an ABET accredited university essentially in the US and then for individual categories they'll say okay if there's any deficiency or no deficiency deficiency no deficiency um, in majority of the cases uh, I find that um, uh, it's it's not an issue okay a lot of internationally trained engineers are able to get their evaluation done pretty comfortably and even if they find some deficiencies Generally speaking, they tend not to be in the areas like the technical areas. Uh, they generally tend to be more along the humanities uh, side of things, or maybe uh, they might require you to take a chemistry course or a physics course or or something like that, or American history or something like that. Obviously, you wouldn't be studying American history outside of the U.S., right? Uh, unless you are a history geek, um, so you wouldn't have taken formal courses at least. Okay, so. It's not a pass or fail, okay? So that's the good news. Uh, there might be one or two individual deficiencies. And for that, there are multiple venues. You should contact them and then ask them, okay, uh, what if I take a course at, let's say this college or an online course here or an online course there or a community college level course. Uh, so you can patch up those deficiencies very comfortably, okay? So it's not a showstopper. Uh, if they identify deficiencies and you can contact them and ask them that, okay, maybe, you know, try and put your case that, okay, instead of this course, you know, 
I have done these electives. Would that compensate for this type of stuff? Um, so at the end of the day, it's 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 not a big deal. And you know, in the grand scheme of things, even if you have to take one or two small courses here or there, which can be passed within a month, two months, maybe, uh, it's not it's not a showstopper. So just because your degree is from outside the U.S. and within the U.S., even if it's not ABET accredited, um, then it's it's not a big deal. Start the process, you know, dive into it. In order to get the credential evaluation done properly, though, you should know that <clears throat> they have certain requirements. You have to provide them the course description. The medium of communication was not in English, right? Which happens to be the case in some sometimes. Then you would have to get the translation done, and then the translation would obviously be have to have to be done through a uh, you know certified translator. So that would be additional costs and things like that as well. So make sure you put the best foot forward. Okay, you package your credential evaluation, uh, you know, all the documents, necessary documents. If on your end, there are deficiencies to start out with, and you're assuming that they will connect the dots and you will you assume that they're going to read between the lines. Right. And then and, and that's I think that's something that that is your responsibility. All right. So put a nice package together. Make sure you meet all the requirements. Uh, application is nicely done. Uh, submit it to them. Right. And then uh, if it comes back with some deficiencies, you know, maybe reach out to them and put your case forward as to uh, if this will qualify, that will qualify. Otherwise, you know, um, just go ahead and take a couple of those courses uh, before taking any of the courses. You know, you should reach out to them and ask them, OK, will this be an approved course? Will, will you recognize if I actually take American history from, let's say, an online course that's being offered somewhere right at a college level or something? And some of those courses are very cheap, like $100, $200, $300, right? So, but make sure that before you do that, get a confirmation from them that it will be meeting the requirements. I hope this video addressed some of your questions regarding credential evaluation. If you're interested in preparing for the FE Electrical or the PE Power exam, I would recommend you to check out the details of my program in the description of this video. Thank you.